So, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Antonio, and that's Mihai uh, over there. Uh, I've been working with the Beto toolset for about a year now, and I'm going to be teller. He's going to be pen because he's a bit ill, so he can't speak. So I'm going to be uh, the person speaking, although a lot of this was done by, by Mihai. So um, I also like to say, this is basically we want to share some stories of our approach to some problems that we've had uh, facing uh, file-based repos. So this is something that we need to sort of face and frequently face when dealing with customers that have file-based repos. So first, I'm going to just go fairly quickly because we have two demos, not one which is a recipe for disaster, but okay. Uh, and um, so I'm just gonna go why people would choose file-based repos, then uh, some disadvantages, and one story of how we manage those, and one story of uh, how we try to avoid it, and I hope it's interesting. So um, the first thing I'd like to say is that Pentaho repository is great, uh, and just like uh, Hitachi Vantara's marketing tools say, uh, it includes great version control system and a scheduler and great deployment and everything's fantastic. Uh, but there are some advantages to using file-based repos, which is you might want to leverage uh, some external tools for version control, for instance, Git, and this is sort of what we uh, find sometimes. So, um, but there are tremendous, there's also some disadvantages. The first one being that it's not supported. Uh, and also, it's, it's, it's easy to break, it's volatile, and uh, one thing that we also find is that um, PDI, especially, when dealing with uh, file-based repositories, um, has the paths for the transformations and jobs bound uh, inside their XML structure, completely separate from the actual uh, path in the file system, which means if anyone changes anything in the file system, PDI doesn't really know. And so when you save files, or you rename files, or you do anything like that, and PDI doesn't know, you start seeing transformations pop up out of place, and uh, jobs pop up that shouldn't be where they are, and links that uh, just have no, they're just dead. So this is the sort of challenge that we want to show, so, sorry. And so you might ask why people still use or file-based repos and why we're talking about this, and that is legacy, it's just historical. Uh, a lot of people have projects with file-based repos, and so uh, we have to sort of deal with that. So, um, I'm, so one, the, one of the main challenges, which is what Mihai is going to showcase what he did, is, um, well, because this is happening, because a lot of people might be working on the same project, uh, you might, you need to have a good deployment strategy before you send anything to production. So you have to make sure there are no orphan jobs or no connections that have been lost. So, over to Mr. Mia. Hello everyone. Uh, apologize in advance if I start a coughing fit. I am quite ill. Uh, what we're gonna look at is, I have in front of me a mock repository. Uh, what this repository does is nothing fancy, it's, it's just a, a, a structured repo, that, a file based repo that works. It will eventually write to log uh, summary data about some shops, but the point is I'm going to try to, to break this uh, repository in multiple ways. Uh, a good point to know, uh, note is that you can break a repository in uh, multiple ways. Uh, one way would be to rename uh, a transformation. So we will do that. Another uh, possibility would be to move a transformation to a folder. Or the combination of both. And we're going to rename this one. And we're going to make a new folder. 
tasks. And move it. Okay? So if I go back to my repo now, if I try to run this, I already get an error here. The path here is broken. This is no longer called set variables. This uh, job is calling a transformation that doesn't exist. This should still be fine, but if you go here and now we try to open this transformation, again, this is broken because we've moved it somewhere else. Now, why would this happen? This could happen because you're not paying attention. Uh, if it happens as an accident, especially when working with file-based repositories, you, one of the reasons your client might want you to do that is because you want, uh, they want uh, to use a specific version control tool. So you could just check, uh, check out the, the latest version of your code. If you do this by mistake and you realize you've done it, but you don't know exactly where it is and you don't want to go fix it, you just revert back to the old version of your code. But this is going to happen for, uh, this, what, what we've been working on is trying to fast forward your, uh, your repository to correct, to, to, to make the state that I've just made now uh, be the viable one, to make it work. So in, the, in doing that, we, we, have to, we have to look at the metadata of the file. This is, uh, KTRs and KGBs are XML. So what we're actually looking at is, we, we've cha we're changing on the file system, uh, we're changing the data on the file system, we're changing the names, we're changing the paths, but inside, inside the actual uh, transformation and jobs, the data remain, we still have the old data. As such, we need to find a way of modifying the data inside here. And the, the code I'm going to present essentially pinpoints the, the most important places where the, the switches need to be made. We have in, inside of a job, the name, the directory, similar in a transformation, and also in a job, you would have your entries where you want to change the, 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 the name and the, the folder. Now, an another reason why you want to do this is before a deployment you want to check do I have any broken links, have any of my colleagues bro broken anything, uh, or I want to I wanna create a file that lists all the jobs that are referred by other jobs, all the jobs, because I might want to work on a specific point and I want to know how other areas of my ETL are uh, being affected, or I just want to tidy. I do not like the structure of my repo. I, I, my colleagues have not respected naming conventions. I want to tidy up and I don't want to have to manually go inside each transformation, open it in the GUI, change uh, the, the name and uh, the directory for the call. So what, we're, what we've created is a repository, a repository cor corrector. Where the first thing we would do is we would pass it some parameters. We'll tell it what's the repository we want to fix. We'll give it the full path, and that becomes the root level of the, the repository. Workspace folder is where some uh, files that tell us of the, the, the changes that have been made will be stored. And a boolean for whether we, not, whether we want to just stop and see what the differences are, or do you actually want to run code to correct them out automatically and make the repository be in a correct state. So the first thing to do is now is to find the truth. The truth now is whatever the file system says. The new names are the, uh, the names that we want, and the the old names uh, the, and the, the new uh, directory paths are the directory paths that we want. So we're going to read the folder, we're going to read the root folder, the, and, for, and then we're going to read every single KTR and KGB inside uh, that uh, repository. Why? There is no other way of finding what changed. We have to read inside the, the, the metadata of the file to, to see the old values. Now, what we would do is we would, we would go and, in here, we would split between uh, transformations and uh, jobs. Okay, uh, we are reading everything with the, the stack step, which, make, which simplifies all our work, because we want to pinpoint specific locations in the file. We can just use the stack, the stack step will tell us our, uh, our path. 
we can just go there, extract the information, compare it to the information from, from the file system. If it's not the same, write it to file. We, ha we have found a change. We do the same for both jobs and uh, transformations. Also, in the case of jobs, jobs can call other jobs and other transformations. As such, we need to look at the entries and see uh, which entries are now different. Which entries, which transformation that I've... I've this, this will create a list of all the transformations and the jobs that the file is calling. Bear in mind, these are the old values, not the new values. We cannot know the new values as of yet. And again, it dumps that to, to a file. Moving on, in here we read the difference, uh, the file that uh, gives the differences between the file system and the, the metadata of the file, and we, we create a, um, an equivalent repository path for the entries inside of the files. Right? We, we now find the old values and the, what they should be for the entries, for what the job is calling. Again, we only want to keep a record of what's broken. Because ultimately, if we choose to repair this, we will have to read, again, the files. This time we will not use text, we will just read the files as they are. First we'll read the, 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 the files that we just create, created with the differences. We'll read the file, file with the differences, and then, line by line, it's quite neat that uh, KTRs and KGBs come already formatted for us. Each node is a line. Uh, we will read the file line by line, and when we find the particular, we'll use a regex to find the particular location that we want, and we will replace it with the, the new value. Similarly, we do the same when we get to the entries. Okay, so this, what I've just shown you, will change the the, the, in the, the data in the information tab, whereas this will do the same for the, the entries. Okay. Same, same logic, read file line by line, and change only where, where needed. Now we're going to run it, and we'll see what happens. This is by far the longest step because it has to, to read the whole repository. It read all my transformations. And now we can look, have a quick look at the workspace folder where I have CSVs of the elements I've told you about. First column is the actual full path in the file system towards the, the file that has, a diff that has been changed. Uh, Old name, old uh, location, new name, new location. Yeah, transformation one was the one where we just changed the location. Transformation three, the same structure. In this case, we have both a new name and a new location. And set variables, just the new name. Also the type of the file. We have our list of full entries. This is everything that is being called in the repository, each job with all, the, with all its children. And again, these are the old values, the ones in the file. If you run this on a repository that is fine, you only get this file which tells you this is everything that is being called. And broken entry paths, we have just the paths that were broken and needed to, to get changed. Now, if we connect back to the repository we've just edited and go to the main job and we can see that oh, sorry. You can see that this one has changed, the others have changed. I can let it run while uh, Antonio comes to this change. Thank you.
Cool. Okay, so this is what we did to sort of manage these issues. And by the way, I'm going to take the opportunity that he's running this to just show you that this mock repo shows some, some is doing things because this is just something that we built so we had a repo to do stuff on. So just showing you that it's doing some consolidated sales and showing you some stuff on the on the screen. So in my case, so I'm going to go back to the slides. This is where my non-existent skills in a Mac are going to screw me over, but okay. So, I had a different, completely different case. My case was uh, we had a very short stint at a client, they had a file-based repo, and they had uh, uh, an orchestration of jobs that were kicking off some PRD reports and sending them to some people. Uh, and they ran these jobs, some of them were every day, some of them were every week, some of them were quarterly, it doesn't really matter. They upgraded to a different version and suddenly everything started to not work. So random uh, jobs would just not run, there was no real clues on why, and we didn't have a lot of time to fix it, so we proposed, why don't you just go to flat files? Just don't do repo at all. Um, and so just run away, is what I mean. And so this is what we decided, we just decided we don't want to do this. They didn't have too many people working on the project, so they said, well, sure, sure, why not, let's do that. So this sounds like a great idea until they told me that there were 176 transformations and jobs that I was supposed to open and reconfigure and, and save it. So we decided, let's just do a converter. Let's just convert this uh, into a flat file. Let's just do, basically, go to the XML and change what we need to change so that this is no longer a, a flat file, uh, a file based repo and it's now in flat files. So the XML element we need to look for is specification method, that's what tells PDI whether it's a repo or whether it's file, it, it basically says rep name or file name, so if it's rep name he knows this is a repo, if it's file name he knows I need to go get a file system path and this is what we did, so I'm going to show you. So this is run, so you know that this runs. Uh, so, excuse me, two seconds, Mac, desktop, sorry, <laughs> I hate this, okay, so, uh, uh -huh. uh, so, I'm going to show you, I have some copies that are ready to be, just show what, what I'm doing before I actually convert, because I don't want to just convert from the get-go, just want to show you what I'm doing. So, it takes in uh, some parameters. Parameters. So you just tell the, the base folder, which is where you have your, uh, your file base repo, wh where it is, you tell them what the uh, input folder name is, so the access point, the entry point, and what do you want your new uh, flat file uh, um, project to be called. So in our case, I'm saying I want something called kettle repo, and I'm going to write something called kettle file. So I'm just going to do that fairly quickly. Just come here and control copy, control V. I think this works. Yes, it does. Kettle repo. Um, and then, if we quickly run this, this is going to work, I hope. So, what this is doing, fairly simple, is we don't care about any hidden files. We don't really care about them at all. We're going to uh, get our relative paths, I, I hope you can see them, which are here, okay? Because uh, we need to convert all of these paths into uh, paths in the file system using the internal entry current directory flag. So it's going to be relative to each file's um, path. So we then split into jobs and transformations and we have uh, our job converter here trying not to go for too long. And this takes in just main job, KJB, it's just, sure, whatever. Am I connected to a repo? Sorry, this is my bad. <laughs> that was the job. Yeah. So if I run this, this is ready to work. This is what we're doing. So, we're reading in each line, 
okay? So we don't really care whether it's XML or not for now. We're gonna, we don't, there's sometimes some, uh, some null lines in the XML structure, we don't care about them either. Um, and we're gonna get our entries. That means we need to see where in our XML structure, which line is inside an entry. If it's inside an entry, then I care about this. And I'm going to, um, this is where you have the flag specification method. This is where you have, you're calling a job, or you're calling a transformation, whatever you're doing. So this is where I have to change something. If it's not, then I just, okay, I'm going to write it exactly as it stands. So then I take each entry and I group. This is horrible. In my laptop, you can see, so this is the whole XML <laughs> is there, um, <laughs> which we then parse. And we can get, you can see here, our specification method telling us that it's a repo, which means then we can override that XML, get our paths in order, add the row number, the correct row number, so that we know what we're writing, write everything back, sort it back, and then write it out. So, um, because I'm running out of time, I'm just going to show you working, showing the, the thing actually working. So, convert repo. Uh, this will work, yes. And if I do this, and I go back, I now have Kettle File, which is a copy of my mock repo. And as you can see, he copied every file, even non-transformation. So if you have some results there, if you have some notes or documentation, it's still there. And if I open this and I run, it should work. <laughs> so while it runs, you can see that the paths are now based on the position of each one. Uh, I can even try and open this and this example here. I know, sorry. It's, it's over. It's done. So, there you go. I'm sorry, I'm running out of time and that's <laughs> our presentation. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>
Good. Another question? Okay, I have one. Are you sharing this? <laughs> because it's, it's, it's really a pain. Maybe, maybe, it's, maybe some, some are still on the file-based repository and uh, it's really good to, to move to a file-based system. It's, it's really important. Yeah. Oh, well, the next week will be possible.